The jungles of the world are strange and mystical places, dense with plant life, animals, and shadows, and there's no telling what terrifying curiosities are loitering in the nooks and crannies. Some will truly send chills down your spine. These are 20 Strange Things Found in Jungles. Number 20. Lord Hanuman's Giant Footprints Hanuman is a Hindu god and is venerated for being a companion of the major Hindu deity Rama, so Hanuman is a big deal amongst the believers of the Hindu religion. That means that any site associated with this god is going to be considered important and super sacred. This is the phenomena of Lord Hanuman's giant footprints. These are sites all throughout Asia which are believed to be the locations of the actual giant footprints of the god Hanuman. These are indentations in solid rock of the Earth's surface which are said to be places where he leapt from one country to another. These are located in Thailand, in India, Sri Lanka, and Malaysia. Now, I don't know about you and how you feel about such things, but these footprints seem to draw rather a lot of touristy activity, and therefore the money that they bring with them. In fact, these places are a thing of pilgrimage for some. Visitors not only visit, but they also throw money into the footprints for good luck. Not saying anything at all, but, well, you know. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. This photo would be uploaded to Reddit and has been capturing attention ever since. The guy who uploaded the photo claims to be the man in it and says that what he's holding in his hands in the image is a curious geode that he stumbled upon when hiking in the jungles of Borneo. Now we've never seen such a geode quite like this one, have you? As always, let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below using the hashtag sweet topic. Number 19. The Sentinelese People the Sentinelese are the most isolated people on the planet. They actively reject any contact with the outside world, and they may have inhabited their island as a people for 55,000 years. Complete isolation on a small island in the Indian Ocean means that the Sentinelese are violently protective of their territory and have killed anyone who have poked their nose into their business. It does sound harsh, but with their neighboring island's populations destroyed by diseases imported from other places, any germ or virus that they may catch from an outsider would probably wipe them all out. Obviously, it's a tricky thing to understand anything much about a tribe that you can't get near without receiving an arrow through the chest, so all that's known is what's been observed by a few nosy parkers on boats that are carefully moored just further out than the arrows can reach off the coast of the island. In the 1880s, a British expedition landed on the island and discovered the villages and houses abandoned. Presumably, the tribe had seen the invading force and hidden themselves. The expedition Conditioners did come across an old couple and some children, and in the hideous wisdom of the colonial attitude, they kidnapped the people from the island for scientific reasons. The Sentinelese quickly became sick with diseases and the older people perished. The children were then returned to the island, but how many were then infected with deadly diseases is obviously unknown. It's no small wonder that the outsiders were met with hostility by the Sentinelese. Various attempts at communication were made throughout the 1970s and 80s, with gifts being left on the beaches, but most would be rejected and then buried by the tribe. More recently, it's finally been accepted that it's probably just the safest if the uh, tribe is left in peace. I guess those nosy parkers have finally gotten the message. Number 18. The Mysterious Rings That Predate the Amazon Rainforest the more that we view our world from the skies, you know, with stuff like drone cameras and Google Earth and all that, the more oddities and strange phenomena we seem to discover. That new elevated perspective is revealing ancient secrets that we had otherwise lived alongside of for a millennia without ever much wondering about, but now we're all greedy to know of all the Earth's secrets. Like this weird bunch of old circles in the rainforest, for example. These are a series of round fish ditches that are positioned throughout the Amazon rainforest and 
Bolivia and Brazil. Research into the purpose and origin of these things has apparently revealed that they're possibly older than the rainforest itself, and they are seemingly human-made, although for what purpose exactly does remain something of a mystery. I don't know. When there's a mysterious circle, isn't it always just having to do with aliens? Shouldn't we just accept that aliens love circles and be done with it all? Well, apparently scientists are eager to find a proper answer and have suggested that these ditches were actually used for something much more boring than landing spaceships. They reckon that they were likely as not used for either defense, drainage, or perhaps a religious ceremonial stuff. Still though, that's a wide array of choices. Drainage is kind of dull, but then again, sometimes weird discoveries turn out to have boring, functional purposes. It can't always be mysticism and space travel, you know? Number 17. The Maracoxi, Sasquatches of South America Almost every country on the planet seems to have its own myths and legends, most of which include that of a man-like ape creature thing that skulks around in the woods, always just evading proper discovery and thus remaining firmly in the imagination of the more enthusiastic conspiracy theorists out there. In the United States, they have Bigfoot or Sasquatch. In South America, these large ape-man figures are known as the Maracoxi. This is a general term for the ape-like creatures that are alleged to have been seen in parts of the jungle area areas of South America. Now, there is a possibility that these are cryptids. That's an animal or species that's not yet been discovered or whose existence is disputed. But of course, there's also the possibility that they are just people and those that have spotted them have overactive imaginations. In many of the reports, these creatures are alleged to be as large as 12 feet tall, although the reports have them generally in the range of between 2 and 6 feet in height. They're also supposedly aggressive toward humans, yet conversely, they're also reported to have weapons like bows and live in villages. Now, I don't really know about you, but there's just as much to indicate that these are people who have been looked at by so-called explorers and have been scared to run away shrieking about monsters. But what do you think? Have you ever seen Bigfoot? And do you really believe in Sasquatch? Let's dig into this one in the comments section down below, because you know you want to. Number 16. Prehistoric Stone Balls Back in the 1930s and 40s, a scientific study would be conducted in which stone spheres that were found in Costa Rica were examined. What's so unusual about that? Well, apparently these rocks, which are found all across the country, and there are hundreds of them, are also completely round. Measurements have determined that they're actually, in many instances, totally spherical, and they're considered to be close to being perfect spheres. Scientists believe that they're actually handmade. Studies would conclude that these stone spheres were carved by the ancient people who were indigenous to a valley in Costa Rica. But just how they did this, and so very perfectly well, that's the thing that stumps scientists even to today. These spheres were predominantly carved from granodiorite, which is a very hard rock that shares many characteristics with granite. It's believed that the ancient people would choose rocks that were very round to begin with, and then using tools that were essentially just smaller rocks of the same material, they carefully shaped them, perhaps also using heating and rapid cooling techniques. However, despite the scientists' ability to pin down a few possible techniques, the accuracy of the skill is still a tiny bit baffling. Number 15. Humpback Whale Discovered in Amazon Jungle Baffles Scientists when a dead 10-ton humpback whale would be found 15 meters away from the shore at a beach, just so you know, it wasn't as if it had sort of flown through the rainforest and landed there and died. But anyway, according to scientists who know about such things, this is still a weird place for a whale to be, especially at this particular time of year. The plot does thicken. The massive mammal carcass would be discovered in some undergrowth at the mouth of the Amazon River, but it's believed that it most probably died while all the way out at sea and then gradually washed up in this spot by the tides. It's not exactly rocket science, but then again, pretty much anything that happens anywhere can end up on the internet framed as a news story, now can't it? So as far as anyone can say, this is a strange place for a whale to be, but a dead whale can probably rock up wherever the water's taken. And that is that, really. Mystery solved. Number 14. The Boiling River 
Lots of strange stuff seems to be going on out there in the depths of the Amazon region, but this one is an especially bizarre and actually totally unique oddity. The Shania Tempishka, which is also known as La Bamba, is actually a small tributary of the mighty Amazon River. It is special when compared to others of its ilk on the account of its specific temperature, and this is a so-called boiling river. The only boiling river in the whole wide world, apparently. This river is about four miles in length and is generally found to have a temperature in the range of between 113 degrees Fahrenheit to 212 degrees Fahrenheit. That's between 45 and 100 degrees Celsius for the people who use proper measurements. The source of the river's heat is geothermal, meaning that it is heated from within in the earth, although its name means boiled by the heat of the sun. Oh well, sometimes naming stuff is really hard, you know. Number 13. The Lost City of Giants Back in 2012, a group of explorers discovered a place in the Amazonian jungle of Ecuador in which they believed that they had possibly stumbled across the remains of a long-lost ancient civilization of giants. Right then. Now, I know you've all heard and read and seen conclusive evidence that there were definitely giants walking the earth in history, but whatever, go ahead and lambast the heck out of me. This one looks like a load of old cobblers and nonsense. At this particular site, there were a bunch of structures. One of these was an extremely large sort of pyramid. Not, frankly, conclusive evidence of giants. I mean, people make massive stuff all the time, especially ginormous pyramids. But there are also loads and loads of artifacts that are all scattered across the area. The usual stuff that you would expect to find in an abandoned place that had once been inhabited. Various pottery, stone items, and even some of them were extra large. Not all of them, mind you. So to conclude that this was a civilization of giants does seem a tiny bit presumptuous. They've allegedly found bones of an abnormally large size in some of the caves in vague areas, but there are also plenty of regular sized bones and pots and dwellings as well, so you know. Number 12. The Stone Head of Guatemala Here's a story about a massive stone noggin that's been deemed both mysterious and a hoax. It got found, and then lost, and then broken, and then lost again. This is the stone head of Guatemala, which was uncovered over a half century ago. The stone head had a big nose and thin lips, and was angled with its face pointed towards the sky. There was a big kerfuffle at the time that it was uncovered, as it didn't seem to look like the other colossal stone heads that had been discovered in South America. So that was just a bit of a head scratcher, but then everyone seemed to just kind of forgotten about it again, and that was until the late 1980s. That's when interest in the head resurfaced when images of it from the time of its discovery emerged, along with vague information that it was located somewhere in the jungle of Guatemala. So of course, this inspired a new investigation. Eventually, the site was found, but unfortunately, some scallywags had been there before, and the head had been severely damaged. Its nose had been shot off, as had the eyes and mouth, and what was established was that the head had measured between four to six meters tall and had not displayed any of the typical features of any of the known pre-Hispanic civilizations. This information didn't help to legitimize the head in the history books. In fact, it had the opposite effect, with many people speculating that the entire thing had just been a publicity stunt. But who knows, and who cares? Number 11. The Disappearance of Michael Rockefeller Michael Rockefeller was the son of Nelson Rockefeller, the man who would eventually be the Vice President of the United States in the Nixon administration. Michael, the son, was just 23 years old when he disappeared in 1961 in the jungles of New Guinea. The young Harvard graduate had taken an expedition in search of tribal artworks out in the New Guinea jungle, and as a keen explorer and seasoned traveler, Michael's trip had incorporated a visit to 13 different tribal villages. But things would take a turn for the worst when Michael's boat had overturned, leaving him and his traveling partner, Rene Wassing, stranded 10 miles away from the shore. Now, this is never an ideal thing, but when someone gets the idea to swim for help, that might not be the most sensible option available. Anyways, it's apparently what Michael decided to do, and the last thing that he said was, I think I can make it. His friend on the boat would be rescued the next day, but Michael was never seen again. In fact, people actually believe that Michael didn't drown as first thought, but rather was captured and killed and then eaten by cannibals. Number 10. 
Amazon Rainforest Alien. Well, hang on to your hats, kids, because here it is. Finally, we have it. It's proof of aliens. Well, maybe. The image claims to show the proof of alien activity going on deep in the Amazon rainforest. The picture of a group of children has a couple of weird things apparently going on in the background. Now, this definitely real and conclusive proof of extraterrestrials on Earth was allegedly captured by a couple of British tourists. Then, of course, the UFO experts got a hold of the footage from which these stills are taken, and they began banging on about how that bit of the Amazon rainforest is a hot spot for extraterrestrial activity, saying that aliens are super excited to visit the rainforest because of the extreme diverse biology that can be found in that area. In fact, they say that the whole region is so well known for being stuffed to the brim with little green men that the Brazilian army has been involved in operations to monitor and confirm the alien presence in the rainforest itself. Because of course they have nothing to see here. Move along now. Number 9. Flesh-Eating Parasite From the ridiculous to the disgusting, we certainly know how to spoil you here at the Fancy Banana, don't we? Next up we have the story of a group of decidedly unfortunate explorers who made a great discovery one day, only to make a fairly hideous and extremely unpleasant one the next. The explorers who found the remains of the lost city of White City, aka the City of the Monkey God, were unlucky to discover the reason that this ancient place had been abandoned the first time around. It transpired that the 16th century inhabitants of the White City had upped sticks and fled their homes when they had become victims of a terrible flesh-eating parasite. The same thing was there to greet the newcomers when they discovered the lost site centuries later. The whole group of explorers almost lost their faces to this hideous parasite in the Honduran rainforest in 2015. The disease is apparently transmitted by sand flies that swarm the area, and they create large clouds which can leave the parasite to attack the skin of its victims. Some of the expedition were so badly affected that they were actually hospitalized, and many more were likely to have long life scars from the ordeal. Ugh. I don't know about you, but I think I would rather leave the old shiz undiscovered than to go around with gross parasites burrowing into my flesh. But hey, you know, that's probably just me. Number 8. The Man Who Hid in the Jungle for 30 Years when some people say that they will do something, they really mean it, and they're not going to give up ever. This is the strange tale of a man named Hiro Onada. He was a lieutenant in the Japanese army during the Second World War, and in December of 1944, as that conflict finally headed towards reaching its conclusion, Onada would be stationed on the extremely small island of Lubang in the Philippines. Within just a few short weeks, the rest of the Japanese forces on the island met in battle with the United States Army, and they were pushed out into the jungle. Somehow, though, Onada was not caught up in the conflict and remained hidden in position to defend the island. In fact, he remained hidden for a further 30 years. He was declared officially dead by the Japanese government in 1959, but in actual fact, he was still standing by, convinced that the war had never ended, and that he was still performing the secret mission that he had been assigned to in the first place. It's crazy, but it's true. Number 7. The Mystery of the Billy Ape in the mid-1990s, a photographer and conservationist named Carl Ammon came across a weird footnote in an old manuscript and it got him all kinds of excited. Well, it does take all sorts, doesn't it? What Ammon had discovered would lead him to look at a bunch of unusual skulls that had been disregarded up to that point. The skulls just sat gathering dust in a museum in Belgium, but Ammon discovered that they had originally come from a remote area of northern Congo. The skulls were a real head-scratcher. They had been classified as gorilla skulls, but were actually from an area without any gorillas. He then decided that it was a mystery he wanted to solve, and so he went off to the Congo. It was here that he had heard the tales of giant apes that were unlike any others, and they were said to howl at the moon, be immune to poisonous darts, and were so strong that they could actually kill lions. That's when Ammon got hooked. 
He spent the next decade rummaging around in the Billy Forest in remote northern Congo looking for that mysterious ape. He found what are believed to be traces of these animals, but no conclusive evidence. It was not an easy task. He contracted malaria 25 times, and this would usually be enough to put most people off, but he just kept on searching for those elusive apes. Then finally, after a lifetime of searching, DNA evidence was tested, and it was concluded that the apes that he was searching for were none other than, drum roll please, chimpanzees. That's right, 10 years, multiple malaria infections, all to discover that there was no new secret ape at all. Sucks to be him, but full marks for the effort nonetheless. Number 6. A Hidden German Hideout in the Argentine Jungle after the defeat of Nazi Germany in the Second World War, many of the most notorious Nazis fled the country and sought refuge in South America. The dark history of this particularly troubling moment in Argentinian history was brought to light again when an archaeologist would discover what he said he believed to be a hideout that was built for German Nazis who were fleeing after World War II. He claimed to have discovered a mysterious ruins deep in the Argentine jungle and had excavated three stone buildings, apparently discovered discovering a swastika etched into the rock, as well as German coins which were stamped with the same symbol and a piece of porcelain plate which was made in Germany. The true extent of the discovery had yet to be revealed as archaeologists had only just begun to scratch the surface of the site, but whatever they do find, it has shaken loose a bunch of uncomfortable truths from Argentina's dark past, and nobody wants to be known as a Nazi lover now do they? Number 5. The Lost City of El Mirador the lost Mayan city of El Mirador had once been a thriving capital of what that whole civilization was, but unlike other ancient monuments to the great pre-Hispanic era peoples of South America, this city is not exactly what one would call a tourist hotspot. In fact, it's pretty tricky to find it all, let alone take a tour to. Located deep within the subtropical rainforest in northern Guatemala, the site of El Mirador is at the end of a treacherous trek throughout thick forest in which an explorer might drown in mud, get bit to death by mosquitoes, or even, if especially unlucky, become lunch for an opportunistic jaguar. So it's not really a place that any old Tom, Dick, and Harry can just pop in and visit. It is possible to reach the place by helicopter, but even then, the whole adventure is fraught with hazards. All around there are remarkable Mayan ruins and many of the super popular tourist destinations, but this one, it's still hard to reach and is hidden. Real mystery lies in the fact that this particular place had once been home to a great civilization, with at least 200,000 people living in the one spot, possibly as many as a million, and there's almost no evidence that it was really ever the case. It would be abandoned over 2,000 years ago and then reabsorbed by the rainforest. Number 4. The Fairy Tale Magic Mountain, Chile. Located in a natural reserve in Chile, really deep within the jungle, the Montana Magica Lodge is a bit of an unusual destination by almost anyone's standards. Just look at it for starters. This place could have been mustered up from the pages of a storybook or dreamed out of Disney and in reality, but here it is. Strange, pointy, and with only one way in, and that's along a very rickety and rather high up wobbly old rope bridge. Looks kind of fun to be honest, and I rather enjoy a spot of danger on my way to bed at night, don't you? Even though the hotel kind of looks rustic and, well, frankly a bit bananas from the outside, the inside is all mod cons. There are even hot tubs which sit on decks that look out over the jungly forest, and there are not many places in the world that put you right out there in the middle of it without a bunch of infinity pools and bloody Mercedes convertibles clogging up your view. And if you're prone to boredom, you can even find a miniature golf course hidden away and built into the forest itself. To get there, though, is a a bit of a trek, two hours from the nearest airfield, but then again, you do get to stay in a magical wonderland in the woods, so it's probably worth a little bit of effort, right? Number 3. Ancient Aeroplanes of the Incas did the Incas have aeroplanes? Well, no, despite what some people want to infer from the discovery of certain golden objects. These are the small golden figurines that would be recovered from an archaeological site where many Incan artifacts have been discovered. They do resemble modern aircraft in some ways, but do they not also resemble flying insects and birds as well? I'm just saying. The golden objects have been dated at somewhere between 1200 to 1500 years old and are believed to have been types of jewels 
jewelry, probably used for nose and ear decorations. And yes, archaeologists haven't been able to fully explain why exactly they vaguely resemble airplanes, but riddle me this. If the Incas had invented air travel, why in the heck did they leave no actual planes behind? And for that matter, how did all that awesome technology just be totally forgotten about for a couple dozen centuries? Because you know, my friends, peeing on your pool party, they did not invent aeroplanes. These are just twiddly golden accessories. The end. Number 2. Cambodia's Hidden Jungle Temple now, in Cambodia, there's a part of a temple complex that draws about a bazillion visitors per year. This one is a lot quieter and less impressive sort of experience, but still a place that's worth a look and apparently is simply oozing with mystery. And who doesn't enjoy a good bit of mystery alongside your old ancient crumbling architecture? This temple, although, is clearly there, and it's not mentioned in any texts that relate to the empire that existed during the time, meaning that nobody knows when it was built, by whom, or indeed what the heck it's even for. Where some of the other structures nearby are still in relatively good shape, this one is basically knackered. All of its sculptures are gone and not much remains, except a crumbling ruin being reclaimed by a rainforest and a big old question mark over everything about it. Anyways, if you do enjoy literal piles of bricks with mysterious undertones, then this may be the dream destination for you. If, however, you do require answers and actual structures, then go look at some famous ones nearby instead. Number 1. The Eccentric Sculpture Garden in Mexico Las Posas is a weird and wonderful collection of sculptures randomly positioned in the midst of a Mexican jungle. In the late 1940s, an eccentric chap by the name of Edward James decided to make this place in Mexico his home, and he filled it up with strange sculptures that were unlike anything you'll see anywhere else. Inspired by surrealism, the writer then made a space that is a mess of dreams and subconscious oddities that is unsettling and fascinating in equal measure. There are giant flowers, gothic arches, highly stylized gates and pavilions, and there are also unsettling spiral staircases with no obvious purpose and an overall feeling of dreamlike weirdness. This guy, it turns out, was described by none other than Salvador Dali as being crazier than all the surrealists together, and that really says it all. Now, I don't know about you, but have we solved any mysteries or not today? I mean, I still feel quite confused about things. How about yourself? As always, let me know all of your fabulous thoughts, correct me on my pronunciations, and generally tear me a new one in the comments down below. Be sure to check out the other cool stuff that's showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time. I love you.